Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to the ICA. Hey, Steve. I'm so well. And as you know, I love you dearly. Um, warm welcome to everybody. I am Jill Medvedow, the Ellen Matilda Poss Director of the ICA. And today is a great thrill for all of us, for me uh, personally. Um, we are soon to hear from Steve McQueen, Donna DeSalvo, and Hamza Walker. Uh, this program this afternoon is part of the ICA's Artist Voice Series, and where we invite and bring some of the most important, accomplished contemporary artists at work today. Through this program, the ICA invites you, our audiences, to hear directly from visionary artists and thinkers as they discuss their work, their influences, their inspirations, and I'm sure the issues and complexities with which they and we are all grappling. I hope you've all had the opportunity to see Steve McQueen's work, Ashes, which is upstairs in our galleries. I, I'm thinking that most of you have seen it, I hope, uh, and if not, you can go up after the program, but because we've all uh, here at the ICA been kind of, um, we've blown by all of our projections for printing the accompanying poster. So many, 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 many people are seeing the work and uh, taking one of the posters home. We're on our third or fourth printing now. I first saw Ashes in London and then again at the 2015 Venice Biennale where it sparked endless conversation. Ashes meditates on big themes of life and death, of bodies in motion and at permanent rest. It captures both the rhythms and the repetitions of water and waves as well as those of physical labor and the camera. And it contrasts the buoyant precarious uh, precariousness of ashes uh, perched on the edge of his boat uh, with our own human fragility and more specifically the vulnerability of black men, black people in uh, the world, in our world for sure here in the United States. Uh, ashes, uh, not the person, but ashes, the material, are often what remains at the end of a life on earth. Uh, but here in this extraordinary unforgettable work of art, the journeys by and for Ashes the Man are immortalized for all time. I am so proud to have Steve here. I have to tell you that finding a date for Steve to come here represents a great effort on his part. Uh, and I'm just so thrilled. I'm proud to have his work in our permanent collection and to have his artistic intelligence at work in the world. So before inviting our speakers uh, onto the stage, let me share with you a little bit about them. Steve McQueen, as you know, is an internationally acclaimed artist and film director. He's had ro recent solo exhibitions at the Whitney Museum of American Art and Espace Louis Vuitton in Tokyo. He represented Great Britain at the Venice Biennale in 2009, and his work is currently on view at museums around the world. Um, and upcoming at the Art Institute of Chicago, the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester, and the Dallas Museum of Art, and you can see his work now at Met Breuer and at MoMA. He has been the recipient of so many awards, too numerous to share all of them, but highlights include the Vermeer Prize last year, the W.E.B. Du Bois Medal from the Hutchins Center at Harvard University in 2014, uh, Best Picture, the, uh, an Oscar for 12 Years a Slave. He's a commander of the most excellent order of the British Empire, which follows his being an officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire, um, and the winner of the Turner Prize. Uh, and he's currently in production on a new feature film, Widows, which will be released in 2018. Um, Donna DeSalvo is the Deputy Director for International Initiatives and the Senior Curator at the Whitney Museum. In addition to leading the curatorial team for the Whitney's inaugural collection display, which was called America is Hard to See, and which I thought was so extraordinary and brilliant. Donna has curated many, many, many exhibitions, um, including Full House, the Whitney's collection at 75, 
Robert Irwin's Scrim Veil, Black Rectangle, Natural Light. Um, she co-curated Course of Empire, paintings by Ed Ruscha for the US Pavilion, also at the Venice Biennale. Prior to working at the Whitney, Donna served as senior curator at Tate Modern, and prior to that was a curator at the Dia Art Foundation. Uh, she is one of our uh, country's experts on the work of Andy Warhol, and she is currently developing a thematic exhibition, a retrospective of Warhol's work, which will be presented at the Whitney in 2018. We're going to be so busy next year. Um, Hamza Walker uh, is, uh, I was chatting uh, backstage with him, and we were last together riding bikes around Sculptor Munster a few years ago. Um, but he is currently the executive director of LAX Art, which is a nonprofit art space in Los Angeles. Uh, and just in case you didn't know that, we're nonprofit, and so is the Whitney Museum of American Art. Um, which he assumed after a long career in Chicago. There, Hamza was director of education and associate curator at the Renaissance Society at the University of Chicago and on the faculty there of the School of the Art Institute. Uh, of, so he, uh, was, he, in Chicago, was a leading force nationally as well. He has curated many, many exhibitions written for publications from the New Art Examiner and Parquet and Art Forum and so many catalog essays. Before he worked at the Renaissance Society, Hamza was the public art coordinator for the city of Chicago's Department of Cultural Affairs. He is one of the leading lights in our profession uh, and I'm so happy to have him here at the ICA. Um, his prizes, also too numerous to mention though, include uh, the Ordway Prize in 2010. He was the recipient of the Walter Hopps Award for Curatorial Achievement, a great, great honor in the 1999 Norton Curatorial Grant. So before I bring them on, I wanna thank Tristan and Martin Mannion for their generosity in gifting Steve McQueen's ashes to the ICA and to our educational team, Gabrielle Wyrick for working so hard on today's program, and Monica Garza, our Director of Education for all of its organization. So now, please help me welcome Steve McQueen, Donna DeSalvo, and Hamza Walker to the stage. on? We are on. Are we on? We are live and direct. I think so, I'm on. I hope I'm on. Can you, you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. So yeah, so I want to, I guess, thank the audience for coming out. It's always interesting to be in a darkened chamber <laughs> yeah. on such a beautiful day, right? So you can really... Yeah, get a feeling for just like, it's like this is like a bubble outside the rest, a timeless moment. Okay, we can let the day in. We can yeah. let the day in. Yeah. Let yeah. the day in. Yeah. All right. Take us a minute. Go, go. Okay. And we'll do our best. Good idea. Yeah. So this is, I'd like to follow a format, basically like a conversation. I mean, we're, we're all old friends up here on stage. And I've written the questions down. Um, and I'm, and I'm going to apologize in advance if I come off sounding wooden. Um, but this is for efficiency's sake, um, given my own propensity to ramble and also the kind of multi-layered and multi-directional uh, uh, spaces in which Steve's work operates. Um, so please, just, just, just bear with me, because these are just touchstones for the discussion. And I'll also begin by saying I crowdsourced them. So <laughs> with very select friends, I sent them. I said, I'm interviewing Steve McQueen on Saturday. You have a question for him? So I'll give some shout outs and some thanks to folk. Uh, the first being Darby English, um, who wrote How to See a Work of Art in Total Darkness. And so he, he, he collaborated with me on this first question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they have to gang up on me. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Come on. So I'd like to begin, it's a very simple one. Outside the films themselves, one of your seminal achievements is blurring boundaries between disciplines. And here I'm thinking of your recent forays into sculpture. Which, um, and then there's blurring... Uh, the distinction between an art world, museums and galleries, and the larger commercial film world. While the ambition to make feature-length films 
has been the dream of many a visual artist. Few have achieved and sustained credibility in both worlds. In that regard, your achievements serve as a model. That said, I'm waiting for the butt. Yeah, that said, <laughs> that's it. And this is a really simple question, quite beautiful though. How does your early work look to you now that you've made major motion pictures? Um, I, um, you know, again, I, it's not, it's, it's not about, I think the question is sort of intertwined with technic, technicalities, as in mm -hmm. technical and maybe, uh, uh, you know, sharp focused or the steady cam or, or certain technical attributes which are sort of, you know, when, when you're working in, 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 in motion pictures or in Hollywood, they're actual easy disposal as apart from, for example, when you're holding a Super 8 camera, when you're sort of uh, 23 years old, you know, shooting two guys sort of carrying sort of uh, palm trees down the road or whatever. Um, I, that doesn't make any difference to me at all because you know when I'm looking at a picture, uh, a, a film or an, any, 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 anything, well, I'm, I'm moving images, I'm looking at what it's, what, what it's actually saying, what it's doing. Rather, I mean, the, the, I've seen the, some of the most genius masterpieces which have been whacked out of focus and the most shaky, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort of camera mm -hmm. you could think of because it, it, it's, it's what's something which is it's what you're receiving through, the, through that lens rather than if it looks slick or stylish or anything like that. Um, so uh, if I look at my, uh, I don't really look at so much of my early works, but if I look at my early works, it was, that was, I, I, you know, I, I, I see it as sort of, you know, having hope, hopefully at least, uh, having this sense, sense, sense of purpose that I intended to there at, at, at that moment in time. So there's no real judgment as, as, as far as, unless it, 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 it doesn't have that purpose I, I, I set out to. So there's no mm -hmm. real, I don't look back and think, oh my God, that's terrible. No, 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 no then, and, yeah. No, because, you know, again, you could take something like that, something like there, which, you know, again, mm -hmm. I don't know, or, or even, uh, um, Cara, uh, you know, Cara, Western Deep. I don't know certain things that, well, if I would have the balls to do that now, then I did then. Oh. You know? So it's, it's not necessarily wow. about the technicality. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's about, you know, again, what you, what you could enable yourself to do at a certain time or have that passion of what you intended, wanted to do at that time. So the right. camera, that's just, that's just paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, again, it's just you're using it as a, as a sort of, a, you know, um, uh, a, a, a butterfly net and a, and, a, and a magnifying glass. So I can care about what material it's on or, or what sort of technology. Why yeah. would it have been hard to go back, like when you say, you don't know if you'd have the balls to have made Western Deep now. Like, I'm just curious, can you say more about Stay that? Yeah, as you get older, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, again, I think even no, even uh, more to do with uh, things like sort of a, uh, um, 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 uh, um, what's the Congo movie called again? My goodness, Grave Zen. Grave Zen. I mean, going into the Congo as we did oh. was a bit crazy, mm. to be quite frank. Oh wow, mm. um, that was that was that was nuts. Yeah, you'd mentioned that at the time. I yeah. mean, I saw you not long after, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> and you you did say, and you know. And it's funny, I think Americans have to calibrate a little bit for that British reserve. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, you, yeah, and you were a little like, yeah, it got a little hairy. <laughs> you were in a coal, he was in a coal tan mine, and a group had gotten word that somebody with a camera and a crew yeah. were, were in the mines. Yeah. Yeah. These areas yeah. are in the Congo I held mean, by rebels. It's kind of weird, because also there's one of that incident which, which happened where um, some guy who was, who was a focus puller, we, we were buying equipment in London at this really, really sexy sort of, um, sorry, this is a little anecdote, we'll get onto the art later. Sexy sort of a supply shop, you know, ruck sacks and all kind of stuff. And he said, oh, look at this bottle. And he said, uh, this is interesting water purifying sort of device. I thought, he's just trying to get some money off of me to buy some crap. And I said, no, no, we, we, we won't buy that. So you leave the store. Um, so we're in the middle of the Congo, going back after shooting this thing when these guys get where we're trying to get out of there. Of course, we had this crazy uh, sort of uh, guy with us who basically didn't have enough, we didn't have enough water. And I'm really, it was just, it was terrible. It was really, I mean, it was, again, you know, you're young, you, you just jump in at it. Um, and we didn't have any water. And this guy, he actually went back to the shop to buy that water perfectly. <laughs> Thank Jesus. Anyway, moving on, that was a little entertainment. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. So you had touched on Bear. Yeah. And which is one of my favorites. I don't know, if, yeah. I don't know if it rates on your It does. On your Macquinometer. <laughs> but Steve, when last we met, you hadn't made 12 Years a Slave yeah. and it was in in Basel. So there was it was in mm -hmm. Switzerland. 
And, and we'd gotten into a, a, a delightful exchange about Bear and its reception. But this was before uh, a Swiss audience who was completely dumbfounded as to what we were talking about. So I'd like to actually return to that moment. Please, I can't remember. So it was in Basel, and I wanted to talk. Uh, Bear, when Bear was made, mm -hmm. it was, the discourse of race, gender, and sexuality mm -hmm. yes. gelled into the rubric now known as identity politics. Mm -hmm. Bear presents two black male protagonists um, who, who, who size each other up and get into a wrestling match. Uh, but in terms of its sexual politics, mm -hmm. the politics of the gaze and desire, mm -hmm. two black men playfully size each other mm -hmm. up before getting into a wrestling match. I wanted to credit, and I still want to credit, the tone and tenor of Bear to new queer cinema, a term coined by the critic B. Ruby Rich to refer to a very loose group of films from the late 80s, early 90s mm -hmm. that, had op that had openly gay protagonists. Mm -hmm. And this group of films included works by Derek Jarman and Isaac Julian. So that would be one question. How, if at all, new queer cinema was folded into your early work? And the second part has to do with the question of reception. And I had received Bear against the discourse, you know, being African American, the discourse of black on black crime. And, and in this instance, I'm gonna qualify black on black crime as a, an expression of self-hatred, mm -hmm. the devaluing of black life by black subjects. Although played out as a wrestling match, I see Bear as the struggle to love oneself via a subject of the same race and gender. And I'm also thinking of My Brother's Wedding by Charles Burnett, yes. where the two characters are always wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, male bonding. But I see Bear as a literal but critical baseline mirroring. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about Bear as we had disagreed about its reception in America versus a reception in Britain. You know, about how, you know, is black on black crime, you know, as it as it as a, as I may have been, you know, thinking about it being hard to find images of just black on black love, especially mm -hmm. between two men. Sure. Um, was that applicable? in a British context? Well, um, I think first just go back with about the queer cinema. Queer cinema is <laughs> hugely um, influential on me um, because, uh, you know, you know it was, when I was 19, it was, it was a, I, I got into uh, Chelsea School of Art and that's when I first got into cinema. I, was, I, was, I had a relationship with this, 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 this lady who basically liked to go to the movies, so I went with her, and then I saw all these kind of different kind of films from you know, Korea, uh, from Italy, uh, you know, of course, in North America, films uh, which I never ever seen before, and therefore I went through the classics. It was really wonderful. We had a wonderful time in, it, in London at the time with a lot of repertory cinemas that basically did, did, did double features and so forth and whatnot. So you went through. You actually could actually study film in a real sort of intense uh, way, projected on on celluloid. And then, of course, at that moment, this, this, this new wave of queer cinema came in. It was, that was the new, exciting sort of uh, thing uh, to watch. And it was just incredible, because there were narratives that I had never seen before um, taking place uh, on, on, on film. Um, they're coming from mainly, a lot of them, mostly from American. Of course, you, 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 met, you mentioned uh, Derek Jarman and, and, and Isaac Julian. And, and uh, tongue, Tongues Untied was a huge, oh, yeah, hugely, uh, yeah, Martin Riggs, mm -hmm. hugely influential film. So there was a situation of a kind of a, um, a real kind of love and a solidarity um, with, 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 with gay cinema. Um, and so Bear was not, uh, again, it was, Bear was not an attempt to mimic or anything like that. For me, at that time, you know, as, as, as a human being, you know, I did, you know, again, you know, everything, any, any and everything was possible as far as, you know, um, relationships or uh, uh, um, engagement within, within any kind of um, sort of, as far as relationships were, were, were concerned. But also to do with sort of um, that situation where, in the, in, the, in, the, in the idea of making there, I wanted someone that I could push and pull with. And I thought if it, if it, if it was a, 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 a um, if it was a, it was a female, there was a situation where I'd have the advantage of the pushing and pulling. And I wanted that friction. I wanted that friction. Mm -hmm. And that friction came from having the situation of two males, to, to, to the, the same sex. And um, so that was that that was the sort of the beginning of of of, of that sort of narrative of, of making the piece. As far as the whole idea of 
loving. You said the whole idea of uh, black on black crime. Well, for me, it was it was it was it was very. I was trying to you know, in some ways, trying to reduce it to a situation of of not nationality as such, but obviously everything is 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 sort of. Uh, is, is um, uh, you know, comes through your, your background, comes mm -hmm. through your education mm -hmm. and so forth and whatnot. But I was interested in, in two people, two human, human beings human having level. this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, they happen to be black. But you know, I wasn't making I wasn't I wasn't making movies for white people. <laughs> um, so you know, hey, guess what? I'm black. Get, well, am I? Uh, so therefore, that was that I was that's what I was in, that's what I was interested in. Yeah. But you're in that okay. film too. Yes, I'm in that film. Which yeah. is a I'll tell you a funny story. So the guy who wanted it didn't turn up. So I thought, <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. So I just took off my kit. Okay, come on, come on, shoot. shoot. <laughs> How was that being an actor in your own film? I've never asked you that question, actually. Good. You know, <laughs> um, no, because, no, because what it was was that because the physicality, you know, because I was painting that first, and there was a whole idea of the physicality mm. of doing things and, you know, checking with Noski, who was the, who was a camera woman, at the same time going, but you think, did you get that? Yeah. What if we put it over here? And then, then we did it. Because you get lost in the process, which is much, is sometimes more interesting than just looking in a bloody viewfinder. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you're limited, your range is that limited. And sort of to be lost within it. And, Again, it's it's uh, and and to and to, to and to to provoke and to be provoked and to you know to sort of conjure and then the person to conjure. So that was interesting. And the the, the other the the the, the guy who, um, you know with respect, I apologize. I I forgot his name. But it was, it was a long time ago. Since, since I, oh, that's, that's unfortunate, but some and, and, and embarrassing. Um, it was it was a very interesting guy. He was a dancer. Very it was very sort of interesting. We were just pushing and pulling, and yeah, it was really. Yeah, we can yeah. talk more about that if you've got more questions on that. Oh, yeah, no, no, very I need to be provoked sometimes to do that. Hey. Yeah. But I was curious, I mean, if you, for Donna, I mean, I mentioned the mm. reception of the work, you know, in the early, mid-90s, you know, here in the States, and I'm wondering if, you know, us both kind of being veterans of the period, right. you know, in that way, how did you, is that, is that around the time that you saw Steve's work? Mm, yeah, a little, maybe even a little later, okay. I think, than that. But, I mean, Bear... Um, I mean, I think the, it's interesting because it's so much also about male ego mm -hmm. and psyche. So as a woman looking at it, obviously have a different relationship in a way mm -hmm. because there's a kind of strength battle that's going on within it and a, com in, a, in, a in a, not just combative, but a, a competitive way to a certain extent, although it's also a ballet simultaneously. So the structure of the two together. But to me, it also had a lot to do with maleness in some mm -hmm. way and vulnerability, a kind yeah. of really revealing in a way right. that it, it conflated all of these things together. Right. So there was never a single read of it, I think, Exactly, in that way. it was a cocktail of aggression and vulnerability. Yes, yes, which I think is so, you do often in your, in your work, you somehow reveal these not just binary things, but you know the sort of contradictions and that keep somehow hold together and they never dissolve. Right. And it's much, much more descriptive of the way things really are. Exactly right. <laughs> and even, I mean, the reason I brought up New Queer Cinema was also because of the, just at that time, for me to see a piece where the subject was not, was, it, it wasn't it, reducible to a singular, it wasn't a question, it's like, you know, black and mm -hmm. you know, possibly gay. Like it wasn't just a black subject, but it it, it didn't just by just conjoining another set of terms mm -hmm. to it, it 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 you know. Um, Did it sort of transcend the notion of identity politics? At all? Yes, yeah, certainly yeah. by having just by 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 not being altogether you know reducible to a singular term. You know that they they never they never exist. You know, one at a time. Mm. Way. So that was where my appreciation for the piece came from. Well, yeah. so again, just to add one thing onto it, I just wanted to say that again, it was a situation of what one wasn't saying verbally, one could do physically, mm -hmm. and all the sort of sort of um, little minute sort of sort of uh, sophistications with our with our communication. Mm -hmm. Often, you know, you, you know, often you could tell when a person's lying or not. You know, they could tell you the, they could tell you it's one truth, but then they, they could tell you a lie at the same time. So it was all about the, that whole sort of the, that that sort of real kind of physicality within the conversation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. in very nuanced ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to fast forward up to ashes. Okay. So I bring up Bear, and I touched on the subject of black on black crime as a way to get into ashes, which first and foremost is a memorial. Mm -hmm. so I read it. 
a genre to which you are no stranger. Before getting into Ashes, could you talk a little bit about another ongoing memorial you did, namely Queen and Country? Yeah. And specifically, could you talk about what it means as an artist to undertake the task of commemoration, memorialization at a national level? Mm -hmm. And then as a follow-up, what does it mean to do so at a personal level, you know, to give form to a kind of yeah. you know, individual grief? Well, I, I did, it was a project called Queen and Country where I became um, uh, the war artist. So in, in, Eng in England and Britain, we have, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tradition of having war artists. There was war artists sort of during like the Crimean War, for example, doing watercolors. And the size of battle sounds a bit odd, but that's what, that's what there, is a, there is a job. It's called a war artist. <laughs> and um, I, I was asked by, by the um, Imperial War Museum uh, to be the war artist for um, the, 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 um, uh, the Gulf War. Um, so I went off to Iraq, um, having a kind of an idea where I would shoot something with, I would film something. Um, I, but I was, in, I was embedded, and embedded really means sort of to be embedded, you know, you know, it's, you, know you were in sort of the pockets of, of, of the military. And understandable, I was a sort of a, a risk and a nuisance, I imagine, being with them, you know, having to string along this guy with a flipping camera. Um, uh, and therefore, when I, when I got there, I, it was very difficult to shoot anything that I, I felt was sort of a, were interesting or sort of, and it was very difficult because you were sort of cocooned by the military. And while I was there, I got to know the troops, speaking to the troops and uh, really got to know them. And it was one of those weird, weird things that happened to me. But for the first time, I felt sort of British in a real way. <laughs> it's really weird. Because there's guys from all over the country, you know, from, you know, from yeah. Edinburgh, from Newcastle, Leeds, whatever. And then you, you, because you're in this sort of cocoon with them, you, you, you know, there's a sort of, there's a, you, you, you go reach for the, the commonality, and the commonality is, 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 is you all being from, you know, United Kingdom. Um, and their personal stories about, like, almost like buying boots off, of, off Americans because they didn't have the right boots or their ga guns would jam and tr tr little things like that, which these guys were sort of fighting on, on, on the front line, you know, you know, under our names. And they weren't even equipped properly. So they became very interesting and personal, getting to know guys, getting to know people. And then when I came back, I had so I was a bit. When I came back, I was like, "What the hell is going on here? I don't have anything with me." But I had this idea of letters, war letters, yeah. and you know, again, there's the idea of war letters, yeah. and, and you know, from you know, from the front of the First World War, these amazing letters and stuff. So therefore, then I had this situation of stamps. I thought, "Oh, interesting the whole idea of of stamps." I live in Amsterdam, and I remember one day there was a new set of stamps, and Van Gogh was on, was on the stamp, was on the one of these sort of little. I thought, "Oh, interesting." Why don't they put these guys who, who passed, you know, in our name on, on, on the stamp? The idea being, for me, that um, the stamps will get within the bloodstream of the country. You go to the post office, you get a stamp, you post a letter, um, you receive the mail even. For, you know, you go down, you go into work, you bend down, you pick up your mail. You are introduced, you're not introduced, you are confronted with this person who has fought for you, uh, you know, for your queen and for your country. What I wanted to do was avoid the media. I wanted, because you often, when, 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 when you went to the news, the, what, what happened was there'd be a number, you know, 113, 114 you know, person, the, the name wouldn't even sort of appear. If it appeared, it would be gone within two seconds today, and the, the casualty numbers have gone up to this. So somehow I wanted to personalize those individuals um, who had died, uh, you know, uh, for us. And therefore, um, I went about, um, Asking the Royal Mail, asking the Royal Mail and, the Imper and, and, and the Ministry of Defense to help me sort of gather um, uh, these um, uh, images from the next of kin to, you know, to, to, to produce stamps. And what happened was that the, uh, the Imperial Royal the um, sorry, Ministry of Defense were not helpful at all. They, they, they refused. One person actually said to me, why don't you do landscapes? I was like, well, I let these people fought for you and then you're thinking about the back, you know, thinking about, I mean, it was ridiculous. So what happened the, um, uh, with the help of uh, um, Alex Poots, who was the director of the Manchester Festival, he came on board and helped me. We, we got, we got, a, we, we, we got a, a private investigator. Unfortunately, it sounds very sinister, but we needed to do that in order to get the, the dresses of the next of kin. So we, in order to sort of get these photographs. So we wrote to them. Uh, and again, it's, it's one of those horrible times where you sort of, you're, it's all about hope. I think, and, and yeah, in effect, in effect, we have, we have actually more than hope because we actually, get, we actually do things, but at that moment it was all about hope. Um, and I, we sent out the, this letter saying, is it possible about what, what my intentions were and whatnot. 
And I was waiting, you know, sitting on the edge of the bed, worrying, pulling my hair out. And slowly but surely, these letters came in. These photographs came in and wanting to, to participate. So basically, we got 93% of the uh, next of kin of, of these soldiers, these troops, male and female, gave us images. Um, and we went again to the Royal Mail, again to the, um, um, the, the um, sort of, um, excuse me, the uh, Ministry of Defense. And the Royal Mail refused to, 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 to produce these stamps as, as actual stamps. So then, I, so then again, I went about sort of thinking about how to present them in, 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 in an actuality. And I sort of produced these sort of sheets of stamps uh, in this sort of um, cabinet where you could pull out an individual um, sheet of stamps of one sort of uh, you know, um, uh, soldier uh, who passed in the war. Um, so it was all about getting those images through the bloodstream of the country, avoiding, you know, when you see something, uh, uh, when you see, when you put a TV on or your internet or whatever, you get, you, we, all, we all get our news through some kind of media outlet. And I wanted that the, 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 the public, the British public, got this information or got this idea of this person through their every day, through picking up a cup of coffee, through sort of, you know, um, bending down and picking up your mail in the morning, through, you know, sending off a letter. So you got it within your every day. So your, your, your head isn't sort of switched on to a sort of, some kind of media sort of, sort of uh, reactors, but it, it came at you at, in, a, in, a, in a different capacity, in a different capacity. And I wanted it to, to go through the bloodstream of, of, of the country. I mean, a, a letter is sent as far as, as it can be sent. And also at the same time for me, you know, I didn't know every Iraqi person that died, who was killed. Um, but somehow, obviously, because of you know, these soldiers and the British soldiers, I did know that. So for me, it was an indicator for those people who thought, okay, one thing, if you support the war, okay, these are the people who died for you and us. If you, if you disagree with the war, this is a protest where you can actually post a letter saying, look, you know, I disagree with this person who died for us. So it, it works for me in, in, both, in, 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 in both ways. As, as, as a protest or as a sense of, if anyone, of support. And if you're not ashamed of it, then therefore this person who died for our country should be seen. And that was it. And I don't know if I answered yeah. your question. Oh, I, oh I, more I, I, than. I more over. than. More at the what level was of, the reason given by the Royal Mail? They didn't give one. They, they gave no reason They gave no all. reason. No they reason. don't have to. Is what they no, they don't have to. But we, they, they, they didn't give a reason. And we had, we, and what was wonderful, we had this one, um, ex, the first exhibition of it was in Manchester Festival. Well, we had it, um, we presented the, 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 the um, it's, it's, it's almost like a large box on, 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 on stilts huge, where you could pull, it's almost like a, you know, when we have like people who collect uh, sort of uh, maps or ladybird, or collect, they could pull these things out. Like posters kind and look of at it and you close. So basically when you come into the room, it's just, it's just a box. But what I love the idea about that is when you, Open, the, open one of these long drawers, you spend the time with the piece that you want to spend with it. The, the soldier, wants, you want to, you, sorry, you spend the time you want looking at the soldier or having this relationship with the soldier and then you close it. So you, you don't walk into a room and it's all, you know, it's all this confetti all over the wall of images, but that you have that personal time with it. It's almost like a shaving mirror. I love that idea of there was this beautiful, was it a Van Eyck, there's a Van Eyck painting, a beautiful painting in, in the National Portrait, the National Gallery. And the man with a red turban, where you, it's about this size. Yeah. So therefore, you as a viewer have that intimacy with that painting. It's not like you have a crowd of people around you, it's, it's a one-on-one -on -one intimacy. And that's what I wanted from uh, uh, this, this, um, the, the, the presentation of these images. So it was a personal um, uh, sort of a, a, a exchange, which could happen in multiple areas, because there were different drawers that people could be um, pulling out and, uh, at, at, at any time, obviously at the same time, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, what was, I lost my horse, must have changed my thought. So oh, there, there was that, there was one other thing, sorry. Oh no, just about ashes. I was just thinking, I wanted to contrast oh, about the, ashes, yeah. the, the national, right? With, is there a difference between that and then a, a personal? Okay, okay. The, the national, it was a burden. But it was a burden that I wanted. I wanted that burden. I wanted to carry that burden. Okay. Um, so you know, going through, you know, you you, you become the, you know, you, hey, it's a big, you know, I, but I yeah. want, I want that weight on my shoulder. I could carry this shit. Not knowing if I could, but I wanted the burden somehow. I don't know what it is. Is it? Is it but that's weird. But I wanted it um, anyway. Um, and then the thing about uh, ashes. Well, that was weird. That was even, that was weird because again, weird, weird, weird. Hey, <laughs> such is life. Um, I met ashes when I was doing a thing called Western Deep uh, uh, in 2001. 2001. 2001. 2001. Um, 2001, 2000, 2002, actually 2002. Um, and he was this sort of weird thing. He was, this, 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 
he was this very beautiful guy, sort of, you know, very, very, very dark skin, high cheekbones and his blonde sort of uh, locks, really stunning looking, crazy looking. And he was very kind of just, I mean, again, it's, I'm painting this portrait of this, of this sort of David Bowie kind of sort of uh, fisherman uh, who was just like, well, hey, this guy's cool, but, you know, but he was just very, uh, he's very on his own. Anyway, moving on. And I always bump into him. We, we know each other. He comes from Satyrs in Grenada. Satyrs is a place in northern Grenada. Actually, it's a place where Martha, uh, Malcolm X's mother comes from. Um, mm -hmm. And was my mother, parents are, my mother's from there. And Satyrs is called Satyrs because it's called Lepus in French. Uh, it's where the, oh, like, the Caribs right. left to their death rather than surrender to the French. He was from this town. I was shooting this, this thing. I met him. I said to Robbie, Robbie Muller, who was this amazing cinematographer. He shot sort of, you know, he was a, Robbie was a friend of mine, so I brought him to Grenada to, to, to shoot this with me. He shot uh, all of Vin Vendis's movies, Jim Jarmusch movies, uh, uh, the, 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 the last couple of movies um, of, uh, uh, oh my God, um, oh my goodness, um, uh, I can't remember. Um, Danish filmmaker, help me, come on, people. Lars von Trier. Yeah, 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 the, you know, it's amazing movies. Um, so I said, Robbie, let's get on the boat, let's get him and, 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 and shoot, not knowing that I would, you know, what, what, what will happen. So we shot him, we shot him, we shot him, we shot him. I know, so you just, just wanted to shoot him. So I, you know, sometimes a smell, I don't know, you know, you have to go sometimes with something, you just bring him. Anyway, I never used any of the footage uh, of, of Ashes, never used a, a one frame of that, of the footage. And then um, several years later, so seven years later, I found out he, he, was, he was killed. You know the narrative, of course, in the mm. film. And um, so um, I went to see his grave one day. Uh, no, I shot the picture. I, I, I sort of edited this thing. I said, let me, let me go and see his grave. So I went to see his grave, and it was, it was a pauper's grave. Because in mm -hmm. Grenada, at this, in this particular parish, if you're not a member of a church, you know, you just get put, you know, in this mm -hmm. pile. And that was it. That was his grave. You know, it was a pauper's grave. Like you know, and, and you know, within the sort of a you know, a few years, no one will know who who's what or what's what. And his um, aunt, who I spoke to, said, "Okay, I, I'll I'll put a rock on his grave, and then you you know where it is." And that was the rock you see in 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 the, in the piece. And uh, somehow, I, I, I'm I'm waffling. Stop me. But it was just one of those situations where I what I needed to shoot. I needed to sort of build him, make him a grave. I needed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I got, I got these carpenters, I got these, uh, the, 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 these guys who actually build graves to sort of say, look, let's, let's, let's make this guy a grave, let's, make, let's do this. And that was it. So I mean, we, could, we could ask more questions. I was just, just curious just about the difference, you know, okay. the, between, you know, uh, the lo national memorializing and then personal. Like I, think I, was, oh, I think it's all personal. Oh, wow, really? Okay. I think it's all personal. I don't, think that, I don't really this, differentiate that. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I, I cannot d differentiate that. It's, it's, it's not a, uh, there's not a ruler, oh, that's less personal, it's more personal. Because huh. it's death, and I think in, in when these young people die, uh, or even old people die, it, it, there's a sense of grief, there's a sense of loss, yeah. a sense of, um, you know, I'm, I'm like, for example, I'm, I, for me, it's like in, in, in the 80s uh, with the, with the AIDS, uh, ep epidemic. I mean, that's a, that for me, that's a, again, that's another sort of uh, platform for me as, as far as, uh, who I am as an artist. For some reason, that is a very important part of, hmm. of, of time, yeah. of a timeline for me. Um, I, don't, I don't know why, but that's, uh, we could go into that later, but that yeah. is important for me. I mean, so. it's so beautiful in the film, watching the making of the grave. Oh, it's you know, And the, the kind of um, care and attention to it. They knew him. They, they, they knew him, so yeah. they had this <laughs> connection, and so there was this commitment, because there's moments where they're getting it just right. Yeah. You know, in oh, terms yeah. of the lines and the concrete, yeah. and he so sticks this, his finger in, to yeah, the mark just, on just the cross, this, this thing, you know, the, incredible yeah. kind of almost like a caressing, <laughs> almost in some way. It's a very, you know, it's interesting that idea of touch in your films in general. That whole way in which the tactility comes through, the surfaces of things right. come through. Well, we can talk about that with the open, pl with, with with the end credits film. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to. Um, well, so another touch of the, it's, it's another. In fact. Like and this, this other sense that comes, mm -hmm. that's what you want from cinema. You want to feel oh. it. And what else? It was that's one of my questions. You want, you want <laughs> to feel it. In. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what it's like. You know what it's You feel yeah. it. Yeah. That's right. Oh, no. Don't know. Um, I know that you're working on a new film set in Chicago oh. where over 3,000 people have been shot this year. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the situation in Chicago lends context to Ash's death? 
And I'm just, I just wondered, you know, just again about this idea about going from somebody you knew, you know, in a personal sense to trying to think about this. Does Chicago provide a backdrop to think about it, you know, sociological, as impersonal as that sounds? Well, I always think it could have been, it could have been me. I always mm -hmm. think it could have been me. You know, I, you know, again, it could have been, I, I could have been Ashes. I could have been, uh, you know, you know, someone mm -hmm. in, in Chicago. Uh, you know, I could have been in, in, and literally, it could have been me. There's not <laughs> even, a, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's not very, there's no distance. Right. Um, so. Um, I don't know if that answers that question. Yeah, no, it does. That, it does I mean, in, a more, in a more direct fashion yeah. than I, I, mean, I, yeah. I <laughs> than I expected. Yeah, oh, with, yeah. with it being you. As the medium of memory par excellence, Super Eight is inherently elegiac. At least I think it is. I mean, if we talk about what memories look like mm -hmm. externally, you know, outside of ourselves, right? you refer to those kinds of films. The Portrait of Ashes, however is in direct contrast to the other side of the screen, which features the making of Ash's tomb, beginning with the surveying of his cemetery plot to the setting of his gravestone. The mode of documentation recalls that of Western Deep, and Western Deep is bookended by Gravesend, mm -hmm. a piece about Coltan. Both those works are unabashed species of realism, forsaking any script or narrative voiceover in favor of looking and looking again. You've credited this strategy, what I'm calling realism, to your love of both silent film and painting, the latter of which I find quite apparent in Gravesend with its reference to Courbet's The Stonebreakers. Does Ashes have similar art historical references? Well, not silent film, per se, because I'm not, uh, you know, that isn't, you know, again, it, you know, it's Western Deep is very, it's all about sound. I mean, it's, oh, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's radio. I mean, you know, I, Tribute much of the, my, hopefully my pictures to good radio because you know when you listen to something, when you listen to you know when you're a, you have a radio in front of you and someone's in the Amazon and you you know you're you know you're in the Amazon you know you're hearing the sort of yeah. cutlass or you know, slash through the, yeah. the foliage and whatnot or or you know but if you're seeing that on on on, on television there's a, you're kind of removed from it mm -hmm. your body isn't you know with sort of responding responding to it in, in in that way you have to imagine it yeah, yeah. I mean that's the great thing that's about it. radio absolutely. And I think with, with, with the situation of shooting on Western Deep with Super 8 is in the, in the dark. It was because it was so dark and you get the grain and the, the whole idea of we talk about touch. Oh, yeah. So you get that grain uh, sort of, sort of, and it was, it was again, the, the dust, the sort of texture, the, the, the earth, the, 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 the particles. Uh, it was all about capturing or, or heightening that um, atmosphere with, with, with that tool of, of, of the Super 8. So it's not about memory or nostalgia in that sense. It was all about actually heightening a certain sense, sense of sort of reality um, mm -hmm. of that location. Um, that there's a physicality in that moment where the, when you're dis the miners are descending down. Oh, yeah. Which is, um, I actually found quite claustrophobic for yeah. me, I mean, watching it because suddenly you go from some sense of light and then this descent that starts to happen and a sense of enclosure. And you really, you feel it, you, you're there. I mean, you're there obviously metaphorically, but you're, you're there in this way. And then when the miners come back up and they have to engage in these exercises to clear all their lungs, mm -hmm. I think this, the bodily part of it is so profound. I was just going yeah. back even to Bear, yeah. you know, and this incredible, you know, the, the vulnerability once again of this flesh, of this, you know, oh, yeah. our bodies and what, what can happen to them. And, you know, that this is a common, it's a common thread oh, throughout yeah. so much. And I, yeah, and I have that later when I get to the okay. future films. No, 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 but this is great. <laughs> but just to keep it going. But the but reason that I brought up the, the um, and it's interesting, you know, I'd read your, your, your reverence for silent films, and, and that was much more in relationship to the early works, okay. obviously. Mm. But it's, with respect to the issue of realism, it's it's more the um, I wasn't thinking about the relationship to sound as much as to the lack of a voiceover narrative, right? That the way that the story is told is visually, I mean, mm. the sound also, mm. the film, it's moving image and sound, mm. um, but there seems to be a kind of insistence and a rigor on what you can know, like when you see about like talk about tactility, and in some sense, I always feel like that that's at and it might be completely off, um, uh, that that's actually being kind of privileged in a certain sense over another kind of, you know, 
more documentary style structure in a way about you know conveying the story of the mine or the cold hand. Mm. Yeah, I think again, I I think I mean this. I mean it's it film is just material to sort of translate what you want to translate in the way you want to translate it. Mm -hmm. So there is no sort of again a rule of sort of this this sort of document. This documentary stru structure is a, a sort of a structure which was sort of, you know, seen as the truth. I'm not interested in, in that. I'm interested in another kind of way of, you know, again, one can do that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's about the, you know, it was, it was about a certain kind of, as you said, the thing that I wanted to focus the audience at. Audience, I don't like, I don't like that word. <laughs> um, don't like that word. Um, it was to do with sort of trying to focus things that I felt were important which get overlooked. That's what it was about. Again, you could do a okay. feature film like you I know, see. like Hunger, for example. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to those guys um, who were on, who were doing Hunger, who were, well, who were, who were doing the Dirty Protest. You know, when you read those books about the Dirty Protest or the Hunger Strike, you know, it's factual, it's historical, it's this happened, this then. And I'm asking this guy, okay, oh, okay, whoa, you know, what what kind of rain? Was it was a way that spits? Was it okay? What, okay, when do you get used to the smell of excrement on the wall? What happens with sorry when the, when the blue bottles come out in the, in, in the summer? What what is what, what is that like? All of these decisions, all these things have an effect on decision making. Mm -hmm. All of these things have a decision of actually historical events, and that's what I wanted to focus on the sort of the metaphorical rather than the historical because it's mm -hmm. so huge. And you know you know if you know some kind of factual based documentary is like okay yeah that happened, but you know what happened in between that? Yeah. This guy had an affair with her. He 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 he. He had this, his mother died. All these things have an effect on making history. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I was after. Do you relate that process to, you know, a kind of painterly process too? Because I'm thinking about, you know, that like a certain focus on a certain detail or at a creation of a, no. of, a, of, a, of a smell even, or even in the imagining, where with a documentary voice, is a detachment ultimately. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an add-on in a way. Which makes, so, yeah, right, which makes me question about ashes, which is like why, with the thick patois, I kept trying to imagine ashes without the voiceover. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes on intermittently, and it's so it's you know difficult for, for sure. this American ear to understand. It is, it is, it is. You know, it, so I can't you know the way that I pick up the information about what in fact happened is through the wall text, which is fine, and so it, it was interesting to try to include it. Yeah, yeah, the, the poster. The poster, the yeah. Poster. No, it's interesting because, again, if I had put sort of text on top of the image, it would have taken your mind. Oh, yeah. Sometimes oh. a, a, a voice is, is, a, is a sing song. Interestingly, I was on a plane coming when I was coming over here, and I put on the old Blade Runner on, and it was I was so shocked to hear Harrison Ford's voiceover. Yeah. Because <laughs> now the, cut, yeah. the one that everyone looks at is director's cut, really Scott's director's cut, which has no voiceover, yeah. and it changes it changed the whole. I didn't watch, I couldn't watch it for too long because it reduces it to sort of this noir, sort of science fiction movie. And when you have the one without without the voiceover, it becomes this sort of dreamlike sort of quest. Yeah. It's a different tone completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's what you you know again it's. It is. It's two two ways of looking at things, I suppose. Right. Yeah. But you. But so. But you just. Was there a conscious decision to include the voiceover in Ashes? Oh yeah. Was there, yeah. Right. From okay. The, I mean, you of mean course, from it was the a beginning. Decision. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, right. Yes. Did, yeah. Oh yes. Oh no. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There has to have, again. If it, if it even just sound, okay. blah, 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 it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, it it has. There was some kind of warmth. Within sort of the sound of a voice, and then of mm -hmm. course you want to you want to understand it clearly. If you don't understand his the person's voice, then you can sort of read the text, or whatever, which is separate, right? Separate. But you know, there's two things you'll be watching: watch a, a, a young man, beautiful young man, uh, virile at the you know uh, sort of you know, you know virtually naked, moving towards it, and uh, a seamlessly uh, you know endless sea. I mean, the whole idea of freedom is mm -hmm. in that picture. Is, is, yeah. Where is it? Mm -hmm. The whole idea of freedom to be, you know, again, this beautiful, virile man, virtually naked, on the edge of a boat going to, a, you know, a sort of an endless horizon. And let me say this possibility, then you, you refer to the back of the picture, uh, you go to the, the, the side of the screen and you see this person's, you know, sort of, the, you mm -hmm. know, being sort of, you know, grave being sort of uh, erected. Yeah. All right. So this is back to the body. Mm -hmm. body. Body and the limits of film. 
Sound, image, motion, film can do a lot. But I actually want to talk about its limits. Mm -hmm. For me, hunger and shame are defined by their visceral character. I remember the opening of Hunger and the prisoner's willful descent into utter abjection, in particular the scene in which the IRA prisoners smear their prison walls with excrement. Starvation, sexual addiction, communicating states of desire at their extremes would seem to present a challenge to the descriptive capacities of film. I know it's coming. <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> to what extent is this or was this a driving, um, a driving challenge for you? It's always? Was it, uh, how has it been a driving challenge for me? Yeah, in terms of what, what, what you were, were saying What were you earlier. expecting? Wait a yeah. minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Oh no, that was a question. How, That's how a question. The, the attempt to try, like the descriptive, you know, how do you describe starvation? How do you, in film, how do you describe? And you were saying earlier about the body, you know. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. But I, it seems like it was the challenge, it felt well, to me I like set, I set myself up to fail. I yeah. mean, that's, that's, it. that's the thing. I mean, you know, um, and, uh, you, know, you know, that's it. I mean, you see, if you can sort of, again, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's, 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 it's hard, but that's what I want to do. I want that burden. Otherwise, there's no point in me getting up in the morning. Right. You know, that's it. I mean, you know, there's been talk about 12 Years a Slave. I mean, people talk about 12 Years a Slave, and oh, you can't make a movie about slavery, and, you, know, uh, or, you know, slavery um, as entertainment or any of that. You know, that's that. I thought that. I thought, I thought you were coming with the hard questions. Oh no, <laughs> no, that's a hard one. Don't worry, that'll happen. I thought that was hard. I thought it was that. But you know, again, I. I mean, you uh, touched upon it earlier, but I okay. like you describing it to failure, right? Well, like it's yeah. like in terms of that limit, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a situation of that you have to again. You know, there's always been talk. For example, I'm, I'm answering my asking my own questions. I'm gonna answer it, man. There's always been talk about, um, um, uh, you know, what you can shoot what you can film and what you can't film, mm. what you can do or right. what you can't do. It's mm. just like, you know, writers. You know, so you can write about anything, but you can't sh see everything. Yeah. Um, so, or, or there's limitations of what you can do with certain things or whatever, and uh, whatever, because, you know, obviously literature and essays are apparently not seen as entertainment, and moving pictures are. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. kind of like for me it's like mm, well I don't mm -hmm. come from that background mm -hmm. you know I don't you know so that's the difference it's different it's, it's, it's very different f for me. Mm. All right, so going into Twelve Years a Slave. No, I think I took one of your questions off. Go on. You did. You did. <laughs> and this is a two-part question. Excuse me, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Dodgers lost. Baby. <laughs> I just want to wind people up. I'm gonna go back to a home in sorrow. People in sorrow. Okay which is a great art ensemble of Chicago album. Um, <laughs> so this is a two-part question, courtesy of Glenn Ligon and Robert Simber. I'm gonna go back, I, I'm gonna go back, that, go, I'm gonna go back to that question before. Okay. Oh. Glenn, Glenn referred to his question as a joke, but only sort of a joke. And Robert's question is likewise a joke, but wholly related to Glenn's, Glenn's question. They're not jokes. <laughs> now, and I love how Glenn, you can just hear Glenn, you have to imagine if you know Glenn, him saying this. Now that you've, you've made a film about slavery, the media refers to you as a black director. How does that feel? <laughs> and, and concurrently, and this is Robert's question, are there times you wish you were the other Steve McQueen? <laughs> You know what well, I, you know I, I got to say I, I'm I'm you know I'm brand new. I, I I think there's a lot of people who are brand new, in the way that you know to be um, uh, 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 a black uh, British artist, um, who people, you know again you know a lot of my roots are in the United States and the majority of my family live here. You know I've got people who you know. My family fought in the Vietnam War. I mean, you know, again, if you, you know, you, you get this sort of, who am I? What am I? You know, my family. You know, I've got, you know, family in Grenada. I've got family still um, in Ghana. You know, I'm brand new. It's different. It's it's not a straight. It's not a straight story. Um, you know, it's just not a straight story. Um, and um, I couldn't care less what people think about who they want to call me. I don't label me. That ain't my problem. I'm just making. I'm making work. I mean, you know, call me. Call me what you want. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Can I ask a question? Oh yeah, about yeah. The jump idea. on any time. Well, you know, it's curious because um, we worked together on your project of end credits at mm -hmm. the Whitney, which 
um, was comprised of the FBI files of Paul Robeson and uh, this extraordinary, very sculptural presentation of the film at two ends of a 18,000 square foot space and mm -hmm. then the uh, text being written. And we did a, some, a conversation and we got into this question of, yeah. are you an American or do you consider your, and you, you saw yourself, you identify, there was something within, aside from people having relatives here, um, that there was something about the US, something about the country that you had a, an affinity with, a, a connection to. Um, maybe you've changed your opinion after the last election, I don't know, but um, um, you're, allowed, you're allowed that. But I just was curious, I mean, even the, 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 the national question that you asked or these things that do have very much to do with certain ideas of national character, um, flaws, histories, um, narratives and um, something though attractive about the U.S. You've worked here a lot, and I just could talk if you want to. Well, I don't really. Again, it's 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 one of those things where, um, you know, I you know, I say this as uh, a person who grew up most of his life in. Uh, how old am I? Yeah, most of my life in the U.K. <laughs> and who's, who's lived a lot of his time uh, in, in in the Netherlands. And who has you know had a lot of time here? I went, you know, I've been coming in '77. It's one of those things where I don't really. I'm, again, it's one of those things where it's just much more complicated than that. I I think America is my second home. Um, it's one of those places where sort of I I. It's not an, it's 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 not to it's, it's not a, an effort, in a way. Um, mm. And I imagine, and I think you know. I was, all I was, and he has to, listen, it's almost like, how can I say, it's almost like when you think of people like J, James Baldwin or uh, Richard Wright. You know, their, their nationality was a part of who they were, but who they were was a part of the nationality in a way of being who, you, can, you know, travel, find mm -hmm. out, engage, sort of, um, there's no, I'm not interested in, in, in that sense of nationalism as such. I'm interested in people and, and areas, and if I see someone who is, is similar to me and have a certain kind of similar background to me, there's, there, there's definitely a, 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 a connection. So it's, it's, it's about that broadness uh, and in that engagement. When we talk about these two, uh, the, these two characters, Richard Wright and, and James Baldwin, the whole idea of going out and being curious about not, and it also is interesting, when you think of people like Malcolm X or, or Paul Robeson or whoever, mm -hmm. You know, they, a lot of these people found out who they were within the context of the world. They realized that they weren't just who they people thought they were in the, in, the, in, the, in, North, in, in North America, but in the context of the world, they were bigger and broader. And there's a huge understanding of who they were, even musicians. Yeah. So it's very important that it, it happened in reverse. Yeah, not just me coming over here. It, it, the Hendrix situation. You know, Hendrix became Hendrix in London. You know, again, it's 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 one of those things where, hey, it's been going on forever. This isn't new. This isn't of you know. You know this, so, this, so the whole limiting it to sort of people like with respect, uh, you know, Samuel Jackson talking about Daniel Kaluuya and, and you know all that kind of stuff. It's it's a complete nutter nonsense. Mm -hmm. But that I would mean, be yeah. I mean, you know, Lupita Nyong'o, for example, or uh, uh, um, excuse me, um, you know, um, you know, whoever as an example, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're just people who actually are engaged in culture in a serious and uh, you know engaged way and manner. Sorry. All right, right, so I think I've got two more Please. questions if we've got time before opening up to the floor. Okay, I've got the signal. <laughs> so, so noted, I'm going to prioritize these, 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 these questions. I'm going to go straight to the last before opening up to the floor. So you and Carol Walker are friends, more importantly, you're heroes of mine. And we're not just post-civil rights children, we're post-roots children. And by roots, I'm not referring to the rap group, but the TV <laughs> miniseries. <laughs> roots was a touchstone in the popular imagination in terms of representations of slavery. You might think our generation would be free to turn away from slavery. I would actually argue the opposite, that we're free to turn toward it mm -hmm. in ways previous generations couldn't. But behind it all is middle passage, a kind of black hole one in which past and future are unmoored from their sequential order. Black identity doesn't have its origins in a more complete picture of slavery. It's defined more by its unknowability, something that can only be traced in a chain of effects without origin. And this is what I suspect drove the imaginations of two other heroes of mine from previous generations, namely Sun Ra and mm. Octavia Butler. And I might be out on a limb with this question, 
But now that you've made a work about slavery, I'm led to ask how you feel about science fiction. And I can't possibly be alone in thinking. Well, I can't possibly be alone in thinking that one of the dopest things that I can imagine right now is a rejoinder to Tarkovsky's Stalker. By you. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, again, it's, these things, you know, again, it's one of those things which I want to, yeah. Oh. So one of the first people to see 12 Years a Slave, um, actually, if not the first person outside of, um, you know, the people were making it was, was Toni Morrison. We send it, we send it to her, because out of respect, of course, you know, we said, that was fun, the first person who saw it so on a laptop, she couldn't go to the cinema. And I just, I just, I didn't care what she thought, I just wanted to sort of, you know, bow my head, mm. to sort of say, you know, I just want to show you this. And also, a, for example, there's the, um, there's the, the, the um, there's a rape scene with, you know, Patsy and Epps, and, you know, there's a situation within that which, um, I don't know, there was a situation with that which would, it, I don't know, how can I say this? Uh, anyway, you know what? I'll pause it and I'll come back. Do you mind if I could, I'll park that and I'll come back to no, it? I'll move no. on. Um, okay, science fiction. So, yes, um, I'm, 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 I'm very much interested in it, but I'm, I'm talking to people, basically, sort of, sort of experts in the field um, in Oxford about, you know, what, what, the, what the future is going to look like. Um, rather than sort of a stylistic idea of the future, which looks good. Um, um, so th um, it's, that's, that's kind of in the works, would you believe? That's kind of um, fortuitous of you. Wow, okay. Yeah, I, and that was, well and that, done, I, was I was trying to chart. It's like, I know I'm well enough to try and figure out where's his head? Where's his there's head? So much, there's, so much, there's, there. there's so much stuff going on. Yeah, but so it, I, I, I'm gonna, I haven't got an angle on it yet, but uh, hopefully it will come. But yeah. Yeah, but it seemed like a logical one. I mean, in terms of, you know, t just certain touchstones, but you know, it's, but I do think of that as related. I do think of those two things as related. Yeah. I mean, the current the you know, vogue of Afrofutur, not oh, Afrofuturism term, but I do think of science fiction in terms of how oh, Peggy Butler was thinking about it, and the past, absolutely. and obviously, like, narratives of slavery. Well, going like, back and then going forward, yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I don't know what it's looked like. I mean, you know, look, at the, look what's going on now. Um, it's kind of crazy, and then you see, <laughs> and then you see, you know, we're, we're, I, in terms of regression. Like, and then you see things like, you know, what's going on with sort of people like HBO wanting to do this thing about the future. Uh, was it was that show they wanted they wanted to do? And HBO wanted to do some show where the, the Confederate with the Civil Rights Movement, uh, um, you know, never existed and slavery continued in one way or the other. I actually called them, and I was I actually called someone I knew at HBO. Um, and I, 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 you know, they cancel my show. I had no fair, I had no dog in the fight as such. But I, I called them and I, I, I spoke to them in a very direct manner and, uh, t to say that this is I don't understand this. I don't understand what your, you know, what, 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 what the idea of this is because we're living it right now. Mm -hmm. And I was furious. Mm -hmm. And I was furious. And I thought, you know, mm -hmm. all right. And I said, and they said to me. Oh, Steve, it was, it was a mistake that it came out like this. And I said, well, maybe it was for you it was a lucky mistake and you could cancel it. <laughs> um, so, you know, with respect, you know, I, you know, again, you know, again, I get it. Guess what? They might make it and it might be, you know, of interest. But uh, the way it was laid out was just horrific. So, again, if the future is, uh, yeah, science fiction is kind of interesting. I don't know. It's diff that's a hard one. It's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. That's, that's interesting. And then you, then you see something like Blade Runner, which, which is kind of, you know, Interesting too. Uh, Whatever. Uh, I know. I don't want to go there. <laughs> I, I can't so, speak. I think we can open it up to questions. Yeah. 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 Now yeah. we're gonna lift the show. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that was that the was that the deal? All right. Let there be light. <laughs> Sunra. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sunra is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go back to Tony Morrison. Yeah. Oh, you're you. Your rewind I'm, I'm, question. Oh yeah, about the Tony Morrison. Thank you, thank you. No, I mean, it's just—I mean, you know—it was just one of those things where. Um, no, that was that. I mean, uh, I'll come back to that. I'll come back. Honestly. So yeah. So I've got a question here, right there. and I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, 
uh, why focus on the conversation? It's a great scene, but why not focus on like the scene where Fat's been plotting in bed, and, you know, yelling at starvation? Because he doesn't say anything. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think. Well, I just want to know: could, Did people hear the question? Okay, great. No, I, I think what, what you wanted to say before was the scene where, Lupi, where, where, where um, Solomon beats Patsy. I think that's what you wanted to say. Um, and, um, and it was both, all of those three um, scenes were long one, one takes, one takes shots. Um, um, so it's just what, you know, again, it's what the narrative wants me to do. It's not about me putting my stencil onto a, a situation. It's what the, the narrative is saying, what, what it wants. And therefore, how I can best sort of um, sort of represent that on screen. So the thing about, for example, uh, 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 you know, um, the, the priest and, and 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 Bobby Sands was it was again I, I said I said this before it was like a, a Connors McEnroe tennis match, two people wanting the same thing but wanting it differently. You know, Connors being a, you know a baseliner, McEnroe being a, a, a serve volley. I wanted to earn the game. Early, so it was that kind of you know repertoire, you know sort of conversation, and I thought it was uh, there were two opposite, two guys wanting the same thing, wanting it differently, and to shoot it in, in, in a way where it was like again, again, it's like radio, because we we backlit them, so you, you you just saw the silhouettes, you could hardly see their faces, maybe something sort of this sort of uh, sort of rim sort of on their faces, but it was more that we would listen more, that you would actually look at it, but actually lean in more and listen to what they were actually saying, the two different viewpoints on wanting to end this particular kind of uh, uh, Br British rule. Um, and that was it. The thing about Patsy, for example, um, uh, you know, uh, Solomon beating Patsy was, you know, the, the most it was extremely perverse act one could think of. And having it in one shot basically didn't let anyone off the hook. As soon as you put a cut in that, the sort of the tension sort of the, the disperses. And I wanted to hold that tension, you know, where you couldn't look away. I'm, you know, that was very important. And the last thing about uh, the, 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 the running, again, it was, again, it's all about the narrative and what, what, it, what it was. This guy wanted to get away from himself, getting away from, you know, again, just, 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 to, just, to, just, to, just to run. Sometimes you just want to run and run and run and run and run and run and run. I just love the idea of this film, uh, you know, because all of them are shot in film, just, just film running and running and running and running and running. And that was it, very simple. Sometimes, yeah, it was very, very simple. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we all. I think we're all familiar with death in one way, shape, form, or the other. So, and memory, and loss, and grief, and mourning, and memory. So that if it, you know, it's kind of universal. Right. So I mean, you're just you want the audience to reciprocate and mutual feelings. I think I'll answer that death. question. I don't want the audience to do anything. I think you and everyone else here are, are familiar with death, mourning, memory and commemoration, you know, we're all, we're all familiar with it. So I don't want them to do anything other than if they see it, what they, obviously the individual will receive or get what they want from it. You know, that's it, very simple. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Um, I found that there's sort of this relationship in Ashes with like the idea of choice and chance, like you sort of choose how, the way it's exhibited is you choose how long you stay on each side and there's sort of a chance in like which side you see first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I feel like choice and chance is a lot about life in general. Is there any specific way you wanted the audience in, order, in terms of order to view it, and what, um, I forgot the last part. Um, and like, why you're attracted to like that idea of exhibition, the way, the way it's shown. Yeah, I, 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 can I get you to ask that question? No, I think your analogy, I, I think your description is oh. quite extraordinary actually, the idea of choice and chance. And, and then there is the question, what, is it simultaneous? Is it, is, is it a choice or chance? in terms of what you want people to see. Is there, because there is a, what's the beginning, what's the end, what's, where does it start, where does it end? Um, do you see them as a, a do, you have, do you have a feeling about that? Or is that no, just really up no. to choice or chance, as no, you're saying? Absolutely, and there's a, there's a little glitch in the, in the, in the, 
it's perfect. There's a little half a second of black which they're fixing. If you saw those, it's meant to be perfectly sort of a continuous projection. But no, again, in, in life, when you, we, 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 when we come, come across things, it's, it's never, you know, the curtain opener or the closing. We, we come across things at a certain time, might, you know, whatever time it's happening. And that's what I wanted to, to sort of, uh, you know, you know, sort of portray when you have to go left or right, you know, and then half making the grave and not making the grave. You see this guy on 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 the edge of a boat, sort of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sitting and whatever. You, you're you're encountering it and you're sort of, sort of, you know, sort of making sort of making it as you go along. You're actually fixing or building the narrative as 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 it continues. Yeah. But I think it would have been something different if you had done it. If exactly. it had been, okay. yeah, oh, side no. by side, side right, by side. yeah, because it's, sorry, I apologize, yes, yes, yeah. there's absolutely. definitely a contrast yes. in the, yeah. in the no. two But the books. soundtrack is actually interesting, it goes to both things, so that was, yeah. And you go back and, I mean, I, viewing it, I go back and forth, because mm -hmm. there's a sort of a, a unbelievability about it, in a way, because you have yes. to sort of see this vibrant, mm. this man who's so alive, and then you're realizing, yeah. okay, he's dead, yeah. and then I would go back and sort of see that again, and then go right. back again, and it, you know, that to me also gets, it's not, it's not binary, I think, for me, at least my experience of it is, a, mm -hmm. is this kind of back and forth and then you can run around in a circle, and, but you don't get anywhere in that way. And that's kind of the death part, yeah. I guess. I'm not so into it. I think death stinks. And again, the, the people it's have walked, a whole other conversation. But. People <laughs> walked in and thought if that one side was the thing and it was the same on the other side, and obviously you know, this happened. And you say what once again? It's again. It's this, this sort of randomness. It's just possibilities. You know. So many. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> You've been watching a lot. Really looking. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, the, the fly was in all that white paint, you know, and it was like, damn, you drowned it in well, a sea of whiteness. You know, <laughs> I, you know again, you know, life, life, go, you know, life goes on, you know, again, I think, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's kind of interesting, isn't it, in the sense the way that, you know, does, does anyone care? You know, life does go on, and... Um, I don't know, uh, yeah, animals, whatever, life just goes on, doesn't it? You know, uh, regardless of what we think or feel or whatever, I don't know. I, 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 these are big, massive questions, which but I we, think glass of red wine and we'll, but we'll there's get a to dimension. <laughs> but, but there's a dimension yeah. to where you, you, in terms of, you know, I, I, I'm going to venture to say, in terms of making the art and having the camera, that you have to be there, you have to avail yourself to a poetry, right? Like what all is going on within, you know, a, a, a synchronic moment, right? And whatever, and it just so happens that animals, that goats or whatever, come over the grave, right? It just so happens that there was a fly there, right? But you got to be, you got to be there making it, in order for those things, you know, chance over choice. So, right? And how many more we got? Sometimes we don't have a okay, choice. Okay, two more, two more questions. Yeah, most of the time we don't have a choice. You, you, you got, it. yeah, the one, the last man standing with his hand in the air. Yeah, standing up would be great. Yeah, just be <laughs> and belt it out. Okay, uh, my question is for Steve. Okay, so um, yeah, you won Best Picture for Focus Plate, and that makes you the first black filmmaker to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. Um, like, um, well, I'm an aspiring filmmaker, and so I have like a question. So, what advice could you, I don't know, give for like any black filmmakers out there who, you know, trying to make it out there, trying to. One thing I would say about anything is just don't be careful. You know, um, um, someone said to me, they said to me, be careful. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, ex experiment, throw it around, you know, try things, uh, push it. Um, again, I think, you know, we were talking about punk rock attitude. I think, you know, things are so refined now, things are so sort of. Uh, monitorized now, I think also in the way of ideas that people sort of edit in their head before they actually pick up a camera, try it out, see what happens. Um, that's the kind of thing that I would, I would, I would, I would sort of uh, 
advise and to sort of just to sort of, you know, just, again, there's so many stories to tell, but, you know, just be passionate about doing it. And it's not about the camera you use or what lens you use or any of that shit. Um, I'm, again, Robbie, I was just thinking of a cameraman, Rob Willer. He didn't know, he didn't, you know, he didn't know what was what. It was like, he just thought, I just shoot with this. You know, all these guys asking these questions about 2.3 and do you use this and do you use that? Like, just use this. <laughs> you know, just shoot it, shoot it. Yeah, go for it. So that, that, that'd be my advice. So you got one more question, dead center. Yeah. I'm sorry, my voice is kind of... Uh, Don't worry. We have, we have two more questions after you anyway, doesn't matter. Oh, do we? No. Do you mind, if you don't mind? Sorry. Oh, no, I don't mind I at all. I just don't want to forget Toni Morrison, too. Oh, God help us. <laughs> no, she's just... So I identify a lot with you saying that you are brand new and that um, the way that you present isn't indicative of your personal, how you identify and by way of like being global while also being a Londoner while also um, having an affinity for the U.S., and so I was wondering if you think that is because the conversation about identity and the questions that we're asking of each other have developed to that point, or do you think it's because there are more of us that have these not straightforward stories that people don't expect? Okay, um, I didn't hear all of it, but I mean, you might have to help me with it. Um, um, but all I'll say is that I am who I am, and. You know, that is it, I'm not going to apologize for it or any that nonsense, and so they get on with it. It's one of those things where there are questions to be sort of uh, asked and answered. There are things that will cro crop up which one has to navigate or deal with. But I, I, for me, it's, it's, I, I don't know if I've, if I've heard all your questions. Can you translate a little bit? If, <laughs> if I, forgive me, I just could your voice, I couldn't actually hear it perfectly. I mean, the, the very last yes. portion in terms of Sorry. the questions that we ask of one another, is it because there are more narratives of, of complexity in terms yes. of where people are from, in terms yes. of, you know, I assume, you know, race, ethnicity, nationality. Um, uh, and then what was the second part? Are there, was, are there more of us with these uh, very global stories because we're living in a more global world? Right. Or right. is it that we have developed our conversations about race and identity have developed to the point where we're finally asking those questions and Therefore, it's being presented more in media, and we're seeing more reflections of ourselves. Do you want to answer that, and I'll come back? Hmm. I just want to go. I'll, I'll, no, I no, would no, say no. both. I yeah. definitely wouldn't no. say it's an either or. I, I don't think it's binary. It's, I yeah. think it's both, and it's hard to decipher where one begins, one ends, because where some of those conversations and narratives haven't come to the surface. You, right. So yeah. you know, I think it's an it's a. There's definitely more conversations that happen and willingness to uh, uh, kind of okay. hit things head on. Um, you know, the global thing is a, is a well, globalism and global is a problematic term, but he's ready to answer, so I'm going to shut up. <laughs> no, I, 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 all I, I, all I, the interesting question, sorry, I just, I just don't want to sort of diffuse, diminish, uh, the limit are complexities. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, you know. That's why I, I know because you know. I don't want to have to sort of you know. Again, I, every day I have these battles, these fights, these conversations, you know, these things which I don't even. It's, it's they're so meta. You don't even know I'm doing it or not. But I don't want that kind of discussion to shrink. You know, the, who we are. You do talk about science fiction. I mean, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'm as, more, as uh, I am as interested in sort of, you know, time travel and so and so, just as much as I am interested in, uh, I don't know, Ornette Coleman. You know, again, that's what it's about. Um, and I just don't want certain kind of ideas or to, to reduce the whole idea of complexity. And it, it would never do that with me anyway. Far from it. But you know, sometimes I get tired of hearing it. That's all. Yeah, so unfortunately, yeah, yeah. That's a tragedy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I watched Tom Like a Hot the other day. Isn't that a brilliant movie? Oh my God, Billy Wilder? The pace, the pace. 
oh my god, the, the pace of the, something like it hot. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's so fast. Yeah. 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 In 27 minutes, you're on the yeah. train. That's, you know the narrative. That's the comedic time. Oh my god, he's yeah. so fast. Yeah. My god, yeah, check it out. That's just. I like that. It's 157 minutes that picture. So wow. fast, it's like bang, 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 bang. To the lady in the in the uh, fame uh, Yeah, you were doing that. Yeah, I, sorry, that was it. The last one, I think. I, I just had a question about the difference between being a narrative filmmaker and making these installations, and how you sort of take advantage of both of those realms, and and sort of take advantage of how the audience operates within those realms, like keeping them captive in a linear film and allowing them to have choice or chance in an installation. Hey, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's just again. I get. I always say the same thing. Where it's like you know, as a writer, you know, you could write a, sort of a, a, the yarn, the, the sort of a novel, and uh, you know, again, you could write poetry, which is you know condensed, you know, precise, uh, fractured, um, and saying the same thing but doing it differently. How a paragraph could sort of you know, you know, you could live with a paragraph for the rest of your life as, as, as a piece of poetry. And the yarn is the sort of, you know, again, the sort of the, 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 sort of the, the, the novel. So it's just, for me, it's filmmaking and narrative filmmaking is, is just a different way of sort of uh, using the camera. Um, how, how do I uh, um, separate or how do I sort of, uh, I think they're very similar. I don't think they're different at all. I think they're very, very similar. Um, just in the way of speaking different languages but saying the same thing. Um, and sometimes you, I need that sort of conciseness, that, but also fractured situational to sort of, um, yeah. I mean, I think of musicians. What do musicians do like that? What do musicians? What do musicians do? They do something similar to that. Yes, but you're cutting me off. I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's Thank the you. hook. It's the hook. When the boss comes out. Well, it's the time for all yeah. of us actually. What's the time? To right. Thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you.